Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. Welcome to Django Farm US. So, integrating React in the Django. Way. In this talk, I'll be talking about how you can integrate React and Django together, and I'll be talking about a Python package that I developed specifically for this purpose. The name of the Python package is Django Webpack Dev Server. For this talk, I assume you have basic understanding of the Django framework. So before we begin this talk, a uh, little bit information about myself. My name is Jitain Sitpura, and I completed my computer engineering just a couple of months back. So basically, I'm a fresher who just recently started his professional software development journey. Currently, I'm working as a full-time software development engineer from Mumbai, India, and I've been using the Django framework from the past three years to develop various projects. One thing I like to do is I find problems and then with the help of my programming skills, I build solutions for it. And apart from that, in my free time, I love to read books and go to beaches. So before we talk about integrating React and Django, let's first find out why you should use a front-end framework with Django in the first place. So for this, consider websites like LinkedIn or Instagram. So these are popular social media websites and in these websites, a user can perform many actions. A user can basically on these platform can create a post, uh, like, share, uh, repost another people's post. They can uh, comment on other people's posts and they can reply to specific uh, comments on a post and they can also chat with the end users. So we can see there is a lot of interactivity between the end user and the website. And as soon as a user performs an action, the UI of the web page gets updated. And we can see that in websites which are developed these days, uh, there is a lot of interactive UI and, and they generally do this so that they can have a better user experience and they which helps them to uh, keep them engaged in their platforms. So, and when such kind of UI, if we try to develop with uh, traditional uh, techniques like using vanilla JavaScript or a jQuery library, then it might get difficult after a specific period of time. And for this purpose, front-end frameworks comes to your rescue. So they are basically designed with the intention to make the process of AI development much uh, faster, cleaner, and easier. And there are many front-end frameworks out there. Some of the front-end frameworks are React, Angular, Vue. So in this talk, we'll be focusing on React. So React is a JavaScript user interface library, which is developed by Meta, previously known as Facebook. And it has an awesome developer community and it has a rich ecosystem of packages on NPM, which you can use into a web applications. Uh, for uh, You can use Material UI and uh, React Bootstrap uh, libraries, of, which are based on React, which can, which can help you to make your uh, website development much faster. And React is obviously used by uh, Meta and it is also used by other companies like Netflix, Atlassian and uh, many more. So user interfaces are developed in React with the help of components. So React components are independent and they are developed using JSX. So JSX is a special uh, syntax. Uh, which stands for JavaScript plus XML used to develop uh, React components and it is the most preferred way to develop React components. So at the right hand side, we can see a console of button com React component. So we can see that this uh, at the top we have imported React and what this component does is it returns a button which has a text click me and this button has a on click property and, for, and, th and this property has been binded with the handle click function. And then we have exported this console log button. So whenever we use this, uh, whenever we use this button, a component, any console log button component, anyone in a web app, uh, it will render up but, uh, this button. And once you click it, a console log will happen. So 
now as uh, over here we can see that we have imported this console of button component and we can use it uh, in our application as many times as possible hence so our react components are reusable uh, react components can also be developed using typescript so typescript is basically a superset of javascript uh, over there in which we provide uh, type definitions to variables and objects uh, so, uh, by providing type definitions to the to these uh, variables and objects uh, we can locate many bugs when, if, which arise due to uh, type mismatch uh, at compile time itself and typescript is getting popular increasingly popular these days and as a and i personally use typescript and it definitely helps a lot if you want more details of react components please uh, head on to uh, react documentation and the beta react docs uh, they have explained uh, many more concepts of react components over there okay so now we like react and we came to know how useful react is for modern front end development and now we want to use react in general so how can we use it well, the first approach which comes to my mind was uh, you can keep uh, Django and you can you can treat them you can treat basically Django and React as two different uh, projects like for front end and back end. And the second choice is you treat them as a single project. So we'll get into details of both the approaches. So in the first approach where you treat your uh, front end and back end uh, separate. So obviously the advantage is your entire the code bases are different and over here all the interactions between your backend and frontend will happen with the help of rest apis so uh, over here you have to use django maybe you have to use django rest framework to develop rest apis and this approach i feel is uh, good if you have a large team of software developers because then you will have dedicated members who can work on frontend as well as backend uh, but over here there are some uh, disadvantages as well so in this approach you are not using all the features of django so basically django is a batteries included framework which and we love django because it, it provides us many features by default so you won't be able to use django uh, forms over here so even if let's say you want to over here in this approach you have to create a login page you have to design it with uh, react and you won't be able to use a django form and then you won't be able to use django's default authentication method so since you will be using django rest you have to maybe uh, authenticate your uh, apis with the help of uh, some kind of a token authentication or jwt json web token authentication methods and uh, since you will have two projects front end and back end you have to deploy into two different locations like uh, you deploy your, let's say you deploy your back end on heroku and you deploy your front end on netlify so your time and cost for deployment will uh, increase for sure and since they are hosted in different locations you have to deal with cores as well so there's an another approach where in this approach you treat them as a you treat both django and react into a in a one single project and over here what will happen is when a client makes a request the django will basically uh return an html file and then uh client side rendering of react will take place so in this approach you are basically using um, uh, features of django which uh you uh, like such as uh, authentication default authentication and django forms and so over here you can let's say uh, you have the liberty basically to decide where to use react and where to use normal html css so consider a simple password reset page or a login page for example where you just have two fields of one is for email address or maybe username and there is a password field and there will be a simple button to for login so over there you there's no need to use uh react because the ui is not uh that complicated or maybe uh over your <laughs> bootstrap or html css is fine so you can just use a django form and you are done and you so you can you get that liberty and over here in this approach since you it is a single project uh 
there will be no problem of course so basically uh, all your javascript will be served by uh, django only so no problem of course and and it is deployed in one location only so your deployment also gets easier in fact your deployment will be same as we used to do before when you had just used jquery or vanilla javascript so now i will give you a demo of a of my package and how how i use this package to basically integrate react and django as in a single project so to install this package uh, you need to first uh, run the following command pip install django underscore webpack underscore dev underscore server since i already have this package and i have already added the name of this package in the install apps list inside the settings.py file then we can run the following command to create a react app configuration for our django project so the command is python manage.py generate react and then we have to provide an app name uh, let the new app name be new frontend so uh, we can see that meanwhile this command is being executed so we can see that a new frontend uh, folder is created and it is like a django app only but it has some extra configuration files such as package.json babel.config.json webpack.config.js so webpack uh, is basically a javascript bundler and its job is to take multiple javascript files and combine them and create a single javascript file which can be loaded into a single html file and then the role of babel is basically to convert the new javascript code which we use uh, for de while developing into a javascript which can be understand by our which could be understood by our browsers and uh, and inside the templates directory there is an index.html file which this package has created and we can see that uh, there is a script tag which says that please load uh, the main.js file and also in the index.html file we can see there is a div with an id equal to app and when we go inside the index.js file we can see that this id uh, this div with that id is being referenced over here and we can see that the app component uh, is being rendered uh, into this uh, div so uh, the the command is also uh, executed and we can see that it uh, has been uh, executed successfully and we can see that it has also listed steps what do we have to do so we just have to add this new django app in the install apps list and the add the urls of this app into our projects urls.py file so i'll just delete this as it was for demonstration purpose only so the front end django app you see in the right hand side is also developed using the package so now i'll show you a to do application that i have developed using django and react so let's start the servers and now i'll start the uh, front-end server as well so while developing the ui uh, we use webpack dev server so webpack dev server is used uh, so that uh, whenever you make changes in your uh, uh, front-end code your web page gets updated automatically without refreshing your web page uh, so this uh, property is called hot reloading and we start the front-end server by executing npm start So this Trudo, uh, in this Trudo application, a user can uh, create uh, accounts, then they can log in, and then they can create uh, and delete Trudo items. So uh, you can see uh, the there are login and registration pages, and with the help of React Developer uh, Chrome extension, we can see that this page is not using React. In fact, this web pages are developed using uh, Django Forms, and over here I have used uh, Django Crispy Forms. So let's create a user first. So now a user is created. Now let's log in.
So when we land uh, to the home page of our website, so we can see with the React developers extension that this page is using the development build of React. And this web page is developed using React Bootstrap library, which I discussed at the beginning of my talk. So uh, in the right hand side at the navbar, we can see DjangoCon username displayed. So this uh, value of the username is rendered from the request.user.username value. So we can see inside the index.html file that uh, the this value of request.user.username is stored inside request-user-username uh, variable with the help of JSON script uh, tag of Django. And then this value is referenced uh, inside the header component uh, by, uh, by this. Now let's uh, create a to-do. So let's create a simple to-do. So let's add it. So now our to-do is created. And if we go into the uh, Django server, we can see that this to-do is created successfully and the request uh, status code is 200. And since this is a post request, uh, we have to send CSRF token as well. So this is how I, uh, this request is created with the help of Axios. So Axios is basically a request module in JavaScript. So uh, over here, I create Axios a post request. I declare my endpoint, then I uh, pass the data which I want to send, and then I pass the CSRF token, and the request is sent. So in this way, you basically get a choice uh, where to use uh, React and when to use uh, same uh, pl simple plain HTML, CSS and Bootstrap. So consider that you want to add a profile page over here and you have just have to add a couple of fields. So in that case, you can just simply use uh, a Django form. At least I would prefer to use a Django form. Now let's go to Lopulus 8000. So now let's log in with the user which we created just right now. So once we log in, so we uh, see nothing and with the React developers tool, we can see that this page is not using React. So the reason for this is that uh, inside the uh, static folder um, and inside the front end folder, there is no JavaScript file. To create a JavaScript file, uh, we have to run the script. Uh, so the script is npm run build and this will create a production build of our front end code so this will minimize our code and so that it gets optimized and once this javascript file is ready so once our production build is ready now let's go to the browser and refresh so we can see our web page is loaded as before and we can verify from the react developers extension that this page is using the production build of react and so in this way uh, you can use react uh, in some pages and you can use plain html css and bootstrap in some other pages and this will also help you to reduce the button size of your front end uh, which will uh, improve your website's performance So thank you for listening to my talk. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any feedback for me, please do let me know. Uh, I would really appreciate your feedback. And if you want to get in contact with me, uh, here are my LinkedIn uh, profile link, email and Twitter uh, handles. Uh, I'm super active on LinkedIn. So feel free to ping me over there. If not, you can just drop me an email or else we can connect on Twitter. Uh, so thank you and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.